all the clashes, all the problems of human beings are because they are not what they talk. Ideals are out, out of their life. That is how a Sahaja Yogi will show himself up compared to anybody else. Take an example, say, of Abraham Lincoln. All right? Abraham Lincoln believed that everybody must have freedom and the government should be for the public, for the people. Whatever he taught, he practiced it. Whatever he believed in, he worked it out, he gave his life for it. That's why he's a great man. Think of Mahatma Gandhi. They were not like Christ's incarnations. Think of any great man. Think of Shivaji Maharaj. Any one of the saints, they were human beings. But once they knew this is the principle on which we have to live, they become one with the principles. They do not compromise. So what Sahaja Yogi has to be? That we should understand. A Sahaja Yogi is a person who has got Realization through the Kundalini and Kundalini is the motherhood in it, is the caring, nourishing power. But mother will never compromise with the son. If he wants to kill somebody, she'll say no. I mean a real mother, she will even shoot that son who tries to do wrong things. In the same way, if you become the mother of yourself, then you have to look after yourself in the same manner that you nourish yourself. And all others also, you have to nourish them, care for them, and do not compromise with wrongdoings, unrighteous things, absurd things. So in your meditations, you have to sit down. Now what do you say in meditation? Try to see all the chakras. What chakras are catching? Face it yourself. These might be from your past life. Some chakras are weak. Try to make them all right. Try to strengthen them. Because ideals have to be worked out the instrument has to be all right. If the instrument <laughs> is a crazy one, how will you do? <laughs> so first of all, you must develop your instrument properly. It should be balanced, powerful, not cowardly. People should feel your power. <coughs> of course the power is of love, but love doesn't mean that you compromise with all the nonsensical things. There should be no compromise at all. It's a very self-certifying state. You cannot say when it is so. You just cannot say. Itself, the state will certify that I am all right now. I have reached that state. You cannot say that after five hours, three minutes, two seconds, you'll become that. You just mature and you see that maturity within you. Once you understand that unless and until you become your ideals, you are not a Sahaja Yogi. Everybody can call themselves Sahaja Yogi, there's no inaugural, uh, we don't have any uh, sort of a inauguration of a uh, university uh, where people can come and get their degrees and diplomas. All right, you are certified twice, twice born. There are some who are several times twice born. They are twice born today, tomorrow they are not. Then again they come twice born, again twice born. 
Some of them can be 108 times twice born in surgery. <laughs> and even then they are not certified. So you have to give yourself a certificate. There is no university to do that. You have to understand yourself. What are your problems? Why you are behaving like this? You treat yourself as a child. When it is needed, you have to rebuke yourself. When you have to glorify, you should glorify yourself. So now you separate. You become the mother, the spirit is the mother, and you, whatever you are, which has to grow, is the child. Mother is the ideal. She is the inspiration. She is the power. And the child is the recipient. If the child is an obstinate fellow, then you can't do anything about it. Also find out. You might be one of them. I know who are they like that. There are many. And you can find them out in no time. Obstinate fellows, if they live with ten people, suddenly we hear reports of their existence. They are quite eloquent. Even if they are not talking a word, people can't tell you, I had a fight with such and such. That person said such and such to, thing to me. That person was so cruel to me. That person demanded this. You know which person it is, where. You see, as diamond can be made out, thorns can be made out also any time you go near the thorn, anyone. Without exception, it will bite everyone. It is not going to spare, it's a thorn. So thorn has to be a thorn. But if you are a Sahaja you have to be a flower and a strong flower and an eternal flower that always grows, does not fade up, always growing, never fades. Such a flower you have to be. Then you will sur be surprised that you do not get into a trip of ego, neither you go into a, a complete collapse of super ego. So much you know that any one of you can be called as a scholar, I can tell you. I mean, so many times people have asked Me, are they all scholars that you have, your disciples? You know so much, much more than any saint ever knew, I can assure you. But you know only in the brain, outside. It's all blah, blah, blah. It comes to the brain, you use it to show off to others and finished. It doesn't even settle down there. Then how will it go to the heart? So everybody is talking big. They can impress people. I mean, if some journalists come here, they'll be so impressed by the Sahaja so many wise men in England <laughs> sitting down here. But you laugh at yourself. You have known all this because I have been speaking too much. Also, the Spirit is shining. Let your Spirit shine in such a way that people know this is a man who is completely integrated, the Spirit, the talk, the behavior, the life itself is completely integrated and this is what is Sahasrara. So if there is no integration, you have not achieved your Sahasrara. There will be no need to pull your ears. A day should come when you all will raise your heads with great pride and glory, because your ideals, your ideals will shine like ornaments. I want to say those days, when all those who claim to be Sahaja Yogis become that, that's the most important thing. 
All other things are useless. Getting an ashram, getting this, doing this, doing that, forget it. What you have to manage is this child which has to grow, who is still naughty, sometimes tries to misbehave. Now put it right. You give it a name. You call yourself a Sahaj Yogi and that child as Mr. X, Mr. Y, whatever you, your name has been, and always try to tell, now will you behave yourself? Get up in the morning, have your bath, sit down for meditation. They feel lazy, the child says, I can't, then you accept the child, then the child will become the mother and you will be losing your powers. Excuses. The child knows, very intelligent, it's a very clever child, extremely intelligent, knows how to deceive you. But the child also knows innately what it needs. If it comes to know that the mother in you has developed that personality, then it accepts mother's personality. But if the child knows the mother herself is weak, then he starts taking advantage of the mother. So you have to not fight yourself, but to tame. And this is very easy. You start enjoying it, looking at yourself, Oh, Mr. So and So, then you won't be angry. I know how to handle you. You are hiding behind there, all right, giving excuses. And the child grows big, so big that mother sees that and is amazed. Like in Sri Krishna's childhood, the mother was Yashoda, and the child was Sri Krishna. It's very simple. And he used to play very naughty tricks. And she said, you went and ate that mud from there, I know you have eaten. She said, how can I eat? How can I? I can't even go out of the house, I'm sitting down here. Where is the mud? How can I eat? You did eat, I know you have eaten. So, better show me your mouth. She says, really? And then the mouth opens and the complete Vishwasura opens. Complete vision of the whole Vishwan, she sees, and the mother falls at his feet. That's what she should. This mother has to fall at the feet of the child that has grown. Very simple. That is how you have to grow into that Vishwaswaru, into that collective being, into that Virata. Arjuna and Shri Krishna is another very good symbolic thing. Arjuna was a friend, used to take liberties <coughs> with Shri Krishna. Shri Krishna tried to tell him, about Gita, all these things. But still, Sri Krishna could not convince him of that. All these were just outside, blah, blah, blahs. As Mother talks are, Mother talks are very entertaining, you know, very humorous, nice to hear them. Instead of listening to any music, better to hear Mother's talks. And then the people think, if they are listening to Mother, they have become Mother already. That's it happened to Arjuna also. But still, he said, he found out that there is something lacking in him, that he has not become the ideal. Still his attention is not there, as it should have been. So he asked Sri Krishna, I think I'll see your great image. 
Krishna said, all right, are you prepared? He said, yes, I am prepared. And then he became the Virata, the vision of the Virata. And when he saw it, he said, stop it, it's too much for me. That's what should happen to your friend who is this child, that it should become that Virat. When you see that, you should be amazed at yourself, Oh God, I have grown like this, just like Yashoda falling at the feet of the little child. You have to fall at the feet of the child that is with you. I'm sure this will happen now. So remember, that no argument, no explanation. Mother is forgiving, she'll forgive you everything. You know that. Anything you do, I'll forgive you. Even if you murder me, I'll forgive you. <coughs> but you won't be able to forgive yourself. So allow that child to grow.